Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test Tube Plus today. I am Trace. This is episode one of five on our Human Connection series, which is mainly focusing on love. Make sure you subscribe so you get all five of our episodes this week. You can also check us out over on iTunes. If you don't want to wait for all of the episodes to come out over the next few days, you can listen to it all as a podcast. It's pretty awesome. We're going to talk a bit about how love came to be or why we have it, I guess, more accurately, and a little bit of the differences between men and women when it comes to love. Also, what it's even for. Why do we even have love? It's going to be awesome. All right. So first, is love real? You know, the science of love. Love is hopefully something we'll all get to experience, you know, at some point in our lives. It has effects on our brain. It has effects on our body. Falling in love actually hits a whole bunch of different things across the limbic system of the human body, which is the body's reward center. When you begin to fall into love, which is what we would call infatuation, your brain releases dopamine, adrenaline, and norepinephrine, which are all brain chemicals. Dopamine makes you feel good. Adrenaline, you know what that does. Norepinephrine is similar to dopamine. It makes you feel good. And it also decreases your serotonin levels. These chemicals light up your brain all over, which causes euphoria and also something akin to like an obsessive compulsive behavior. These chemicals are mostly exclusive to what you'd probably call with your friends the honeymoon period, you know, when people are just all over each other and they're very lusty and it's it's very much an infatuation phase. But post-infatuation, as the brain gets used to that flood of chemicals, the adrenaline, the norepinephrine, the dopamine, Then you get new brain chemicals. Your brain's like, whoa, 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 calm it down. If this is going to be a thing, we need to hold on to it. So then your brain releases vasopressin and oxytocin. Oxytocin is sometimes called the love hormone. You get little squirts of oxytocin when things happen that your brain wants to reinforce in a more long-term capacity. They create feelings of well-being. They create feelings of security. And that means that the honeymoon phase is over and people are into more long-term attraction. And this for the long haul. And that can mean years. After 20 years of marriage, people whose brains were scanned had more activity in the posterior globus pallidus part of the brain which is associated with pleasure and also with pain relief. So people just feel good most of the time when they're in long-term committed relationships. This usually activates for people that aren't in those types of relationships when you eat your favorite food or when you get a squirt of morphine up inside of you. The problem is that we can get hooked on all of these chemicals. If you end up breaking up, you know, you go cold turkey on these chemicals, you know, say those chemicals went out to get a pint of milk and never came back, Now you gotta deal with that new reality, with your brain lacking things that it's gotten used to, these very happy, pleasurable chemicals, dopamine and oxytocin, and you know, you're 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 at a loss. What do you do now? This is what we call heartbreak. Johns Hopkins University's found your body responds to emotional stress of a broken heart, similar to a physical illness, something that is afflicting you. And in doing so, it releases tons of hormones like cortisol, which is one of the many stress hormones, and adrenaline, which you know kind of gets things heated inside of your body, which turns up your immune responses. And these hormone levels are three times as high as someone who's actually experiencing a heart attack. All of that stuff causes your heart to not be able to pump as well, and you, you really physically feel it. Not only is your brain starving for these feel-good chemicals, your body is experiencing physical stress. Heartbreak is hitting you both mentally and physically. And of course, on top of that, psychologically. Breakups show the same activity in the brain as an addict being denied nicotine or cocaine. And love activates the caudate nucleus, which is your brain's reward center. You're constantly getting flooded with all that dopamine, which is the same thing that a drug does. So when you hit heartbreak, it's kind of like getting over an addiction. Studies show that dumped people who are looking at photos of their old partners would actually get a hit of dopamine from their own brains. Like, this is why you Facebook stalk your ex, because it makes you feel just a little bit better in your reward center because you're going through this chemical withdrawal. But that's not unlike someone who's addicted to a drug just taking a little hit of that drug to try and get over it. It doesn't work that way. You have to go cold turkey at some point or find something else to occupy your brain. 
But then, you know, at some point when you're doing this in the study with the, the Facebook photos, the prefrontal cortex was all like, whoa, whoa, they're not coming back. The prefrontal cortex is like the part of your brain that does executive function, it helps with your reasoning and helps you, you know, kind of talk yourself off this cliff. So that's when anger and depression tend to set in and you get this addict cycle where you want to go look at your ex's photos because it makes you feel better, but then your brain's like, stop it, stop it and then you get mad at your own brain. In a breakup, men and women behave a little differently. This does eventually get better. The best way to get over this is instead of habituating to having all those chemicals in your brain, you have to habituate to not having those chemicals, and it just takes some time. A study published in Evolutionary Behavioral Sciences found that when women experience a breakup, they get a lot of emotional pain right away, you know, in the first days and weeks after their breakup. But eventually, they're gonna fully recover. They're going to feel fine. They're going to be A-OK. -okay. Men, on the other hand, they get less initial emotional pain, but they will carry this low level of pain maybe forever. Sounds kind of crappy. In their study, women reported feeling depression and fear and anxiety after a breakup, whereas men reported feeling numbness and a loss of focus as well as anger. All of these things make sense, especially if people have actually gone through breakups and they've felt this. Most of us can identify. Most of us have also fell in love before, you know. Our brain completely changes when we're on the drug that is love. And breaking up, that's like going cold turkey on that drug. Your love is literally my drug. Kesha's like a genius. And I just want to take a second and thank K Jewelers. They are the number one jewelry store in America, and they sponsored this episode of Test Tube Plus. So thanks. But if this is, you know, so messed up, why do we fall in love at all? What's up with that? You can find out tomorrow on Test Tube Plus, so make sure you subscribe and come back for that. If you have any questions about science or topics we covered here on Test Tube Plus, you can ask us on Twitter at Test Tube or me at Trace Dominguez. And make sure you let us know down in the comments the best way that you've gotten over a breakup. I mean, ice cream always helps, I'm pretty sure. Thanks for watching.